Baby? Yes? What if I just introduced you as just my good friend? Nothing else. It's like, this is Avery. Just my, she's just my good friend. <laughs> I would be like, uh, would you how good of a friend? Pretty good. Um, Pretty good. I mean, you know, not, just, not too bad. Yeah. How how good of friends like? To... Um, I would rate her a ten out of ten on on a good friend scale. Good friend scale. You gonna ask her out? I'd love to ask her out. <laughs> All right, everyone. Wait. Welcome to the show. This is my girlfriend Avery. Lovely to have her here. How are you doing, Avery? I'm doing well. It's Saturday. That's it's good. sunny in the outside, but it's cool. It's cool yeah. in Florida for once. You know what? Well, 21 Celsius? 21? It's. I went for, for me. A walk this morning and I had like a jacket on and I was like still like kind of sweating. So it's not that bad. It's kind of cool. Yeah, kind of cool. For me, that's like fall. It's fall now. Yeah. Fall and fall. So this is episode six of the podcast, and I'm still like working on some things. Uh, people have told me that I'm not very expressive. Like my face doesn't show emotion too much, so I'm working on that. <laughs> oh no, my monitor turned off. Yeah, I'm back there. Nice. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? I mean, the first step forward, you know, it's like um, being aware. Um, I would have to say I find myself pretty entertaining. You know, I make you laugh a lot and smile. So yeah. I don't, it's not like I don't see you not expressive too much, you know. Oh, that's in person. Like on camera, I think for some reason my face just freezes. Did you know that oh. I um, auditioned for a movie? When? No, I didn't know. Like, maybe like three or four years ago. You know the movie oh, Crazy okay. Rich Asians? I, I auditioned for that. Hey, why not? I would totally do that too if I was in your position. Oh, man. Hell um, yeah. I, I even hired an acting coach. Oh, whoa. Like, like three or four lessons. What were you, what role were you auditioning for? Uh, I think it was just some random character. I don't. I don't know if it was the lead or not. It was just like for a role in the film. I don't. I don't think mm -hmm. they like distinguished between them. But like, the script was really bad, and um, I wasn't like the best at the time. I hadn't done like a whole bunch of improv classes yet, which like okay. I eventually got to doing. Um, yes. Improv is fun, but it's really hard. Have you like, have you tried that stuff before? Mm, I've performed in front of other people, but I practiced ahead of time. So not improv, but you know, yeah. it's like a mini thing. Are you good at memorizing lines at all for a script? Uh, I mean, I memorize lines for language classes, but that's, about it i mean i don't know i would say i'm pretty good not expert but yeah i don't know how it depends on how much you have to memorize i don't know yeah because that's a big part of it you can be mm -hmm. really good at expressing yourself and and acting in general but um it's just like a skill that you need to memorize lines and like deliver them really quickly yeah 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 so naturally and naturally that was uh, mm -hmm. just a piece of my life like I, I i really wanted to do some sort of entertainment stuff which mm -hmm. i guess this is partly it so i'm, I'm glad i'm living the dream <laughs> nice my good friend I'm glad it worked out yeah good friend <laughs> <laughs> uh how have you been otherwise um i saw that you played some left for dead last night how was that um, it was pretty fun. I like shooting, like zombies. It's fun. I, I think like of all the shooter video games, like I I really like that one. Yeah, um, it's easy to. It's pick. like, 
Yeah, it's like easy to play. Um, yeah. The weapons aren't too complicated. Roll right into it too. Yeah, yeah, it's like a rush. And like, I'm not a very patient woman, I'm not gonna lie. And there's not much strategy to it. It's like simple rules. They're like, hey, don't don't mess with that person, that's it. And uh, don't let that guy touch you. They, it's like predictable um, enough, you know, that I can like, I know what to do. So even if I'm caught by surprise, like um, I can work around it. So I, I like that. Um, what's the most annoying enemy among like the different characters in it? Um, uh, I started playing the second one. Um, okay, so like, uh, for those who don't know, Left 4 Dead is like a shooter game where you like kill zombies and stuff. And this game's unique because they'll have special infected, so they'll be like this large, like obese man that like if you shoot yeah. him he explodes and it if booms. it gets on you it's super gross it's if he booms on booms. you yes. then a bunch of zombies like come running at you and um there's this other woman that like sits in the corner and cries um boohoo um but if you like startle her she will like attack you and Rich. she like kills you like almost instantly and um i would say the one that's the most annoying for me it's probably this this zombie is called a spitter um she's really tall and she spits out acid and that's like a new one in left for dead 2 and huh. i do not like her you know why because i'm not patient i told you i'm not patient so oh. she'll spit and it's like acid and it blocks my way and i just want to go and i actually <laughs> died because i ran over it anyway and then i had like i was like i got 80 health i'm good and then i walked over it was like 20 like I, all my health was you've seen me done. throw like a molotov cocktail like right in the path we're supposed to go and delay us for a bit yeah right? yeah yeah and except like me yeah yeah believe it or not there's worse than you when it comes to that. <laughs> it's really? the acid and the acid is bad um i actually want to play that with you now that i think about it because it's sure, like a it later hey okay but yeah um that's the other stuff I'm up to there. I didn't tell you yet, though, Patrick. What? So, technically, you're hearing this first, but others as well. Yeah. Um, my electric violin's coming next week. No way. So, Are yeah. So I'm, um, no, I'm getting it new, but it's like, okay. um, yeah, but it's like discounted. Because, like I said, um, yeah. I didn't tell him I was anticipating a purchase like that. I did not want to spend $600 on something I may maybe use so um this one you can always like, sell it right if, if like worse push comes to shove you don't use yeah, it yeah but then it would be lightly used and i wouldn't get all my money back yeah that's true so you can so well, you're you're probably going to be playing it a bunch right yeah, yeah yeah then i can invest in it later you know that's cool so, yeah i'm that's excited cool. for that then back my, in the music my first girlfriend uh played the violin mm -hmm. i i only oh, heard it once though Huh. Wait, how long has she played? Mm, I think she grew up playing it. Like she was really. Oh good. wow! So her, I'm not gonna pretend I did that. The one on the piano, like they. Oh played wow! It's pretty good. That's cool. Yeah. Now I'm gonna be practicing, but I'm gonna. It's an electric violin. What I'm hoping to do is like upload beats. Uh, I want to make like songs. Like I just come up with a lot of songs in my head, and like I just kind of want to full flesh. I want to flesh them out, like just to be like, hey, look. This is what I this is the what I was picturing in my head because I have so many. You're using ideas. Fruity Loops, right? Your brother showed you that software. For, I yeah, I, I looked at that, um, but I heard that they just kind of like abruptly stop your service after it's free for a bit. So I'm looking in the Studio One, something like that. Studio mm -hmm. One for that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also um, I'm gonna do like this YouTube cartoon series. I think it'd be really fun. That I, I haven't you said have anything. A cartoon series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, so yeah. this is news to me. Are yeah, you, yeah, are yeah. The comics that you're you're looking at right now up above. No, I want to. <laughs> I want to make like a funny um comic. Like it's this family. It's a stick figure family, and all the background is like super detailed. But it's only the stick figure. Can I be a guest writer? Like, can I <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, you can help. Yeah, yeah. But you can draw really well. Yeah, I, if I'm like lazy with people, so I was like, why not just stick figures? And that's just the thing. So, yeah. um, I'll yeah. be stick figures. Yeah. And 
I'll voice all the characters and all, all, any special character that's like super famous will have my normal voice. So like they, somebody would be like, hey, that's Black, like Jack Black, whoa. And be like, hey guys, that was a good one. <laughs> you just be like, like, just thought it'd be funny. Like, why? But because it's, it's funny. For the sake of it. Yeah, because it's supposed to, it's just a running joke. In your own cartoon? <laughs> I'm going to be myself famous. You know, it's just yeah. taken. Oh, I can I, only do so many voices. You know? this. Yeah, I'm yeah. I did for it. When are you gonna start? Have you have you had um, any ideas? I have my break. I'm taking a staycation, um, the week after this one. So, Same. yeah, what a coincidence. Maybe it's we'll do something together. You're gonna be too busy making your comic strip. No, Flash no. Comic. You said you would. You said you would help me anyway. So. Okay, we'll do a collab. <laughs> we but yeah, produce a I'm full. I'm gonna be series. really busy. A full series, yeah, I think it'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like lots of different things I'm up to. Yeah, lots you know? going on. That's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then there's this, of course, with you. Mm -hmm. so I'm really excited. enjoying this podcast. This episode in particular, for sure, but um. Like the five episodes previous, like it just keeps getting more interesting, and mm -hmm. I guess like I'm getting more comfortable with hosting the show, and it's awesome. Like my comfort makes the guests feel comfortable, and uh, like most of the feedback is after the show, like they really enjoyed it, had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Probably yeah. be the same here, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I've been reading a book to you called more than this mm -hmm. it's like one of my favorite books it's hard to describe it's like about a boy that um dies and wakes up in like this afterlife which he is trying to feel out um do you enjoy it i do it's i good. do enjoy it very it's much really yeah it's very very suspenseful yeah um it's just the beginning, so I don't think this is much of a spoiler, but like this guy, like we're just walking through just him like getting his bearings back. Like this guy's just kind of like, whoa, I'm dead. Um, like where am I? Like, you yeah. know, like like the he doesn't basic stuff he's re experiencing. Yeah. Like as, he didn't know what thirst was. Person. Yeah. He couldn't define thirst. Like he yeah. felt it. And, and then, then like it was so primal. Speaking yeah. Again yeah it's, it's in the a pain. brilliant book like i can't yeah i can't imagine being a writer and being able to describe like the feeling of like all these sensations it's just so like to me it's like really abstract but when he puts it out like that it's like it's like obvious like it should be like this yeah it makes me wonder um i'm certain normally when it comes to books like these the author does some research yeah. i wonder who they talk to Yes, like, who did they, like specialists or like did they talk to doctor. people who come out from co a coma perhaps mm -hmm. like they're just trying to get mm -hmm. all these things back like they come out of it and they're like whoa yeah. like I don't even I just know I needed something bad yeah. and then they're like mm -hmm. thirst like I know that word you know like yeah for for like um a fantasy I guess it just makes sense mm -hmm. like it's a realistic fantasy. solid world building yeah, yeah i'm sure um yeah. i i didn't get to finish it uh the first time i read it like i i went back and read it to you uh -huh. so like i don't know the ending i got like maybe three quarters of the way through oh okay so we'll find the ending out together then we'll find out that's cool that's yeah. cool okay have you been reading yeah, so, uh, on your huh? own have you been reading it all on your own um no but only because like i just kind of get overwhelmed like um i'm kind of mean like i'm always like oh you want to get a book we're not a self-help book or like meh, meh, meh. like I'm, I'm always like I'm, I, um, i've been lately using books more to like either improve myself or like expand my knowledge yeah so reading hasn't been as much fun for me lately oh, I, I need to get back into mystery books so yeah, until yeah, i can have like yeah. a more uh, I guess like relaxed. Like, I'm fun sorry, experience, had... fun experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, I want a more fun experience, and until I can like allow myself to uh, relax to the extent that I can pick out a book that's fun and not feel like I'm not being productive. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just staying away. And speaking know. of forms of entertainment, um, how are you enjoying watching Down to Earth with me? The Netflix Down to Earth series. Sometimes. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. I really like it. Uh, um, it's fun to be along, uh, kind of alongside Zach and um, what's his name, Douglas. Me. And Douglas. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um together on their like adventures you know and experience things with them it's, it's cool um like they uh there is just like even i don't know like it's kind of i don't know it's just really cool to be taken around the world and experience different things and um is there anything in particular from one of the episodes that like made you really think or um i guess like is some some new fact that you've never never thought of before? Um. Well, what I really liked was the very first episode, Iceland. Yes. I thought it was really cool how they had all sorts of like different ways to power um, their country. Yeah. And do it so cleanly. Me too. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, it's like they when he um he went to the the falls i guess and there was like uh -huh. some dude just there and we don't know whether he worked like he was working or he was just a visitor right but yeah, he was yeah. kind of trying to explain the falls but he didn't know <laughs> much about it and, and yeah. zach and his buddy are just like well, yeah they're what, like what's this guy doing here <laughs> yeah <laughs> why, why doesn't he know anything about <laughs> the falls <laughs> you know how much water falls a day like Probably a lot. Like, like, <laughs> how many people see this? Like, fair amount. A fair probably amount. a lot. I don't know. It's probably a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know the exact figures, but like, yeah, yeah a decent amount. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and you're like, you should know of all people. Like, just ask someone else. You know, how long he was like. That's kind of he was working job. there for a like, month or what, something. That's what his job is. That's like the one thing he has to do. Right? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's he's like not supposed to just stand there. Front of yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's really awkward. Yeah, now now I see about it, that's literal his literal job just stand there like yeah. tell people about it. And like like oh, I get it if he's new. Have you ever been mm -hmm. to like a uh, grocery store and you're looking for like olives or something and you ask like the new like teenage boy and he he just has uh -huh. no idea. Like you 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 gotta you gotta give him some credit for. Yeah, but it's like. I don't know. Those seem like the basic facts someone would ask. You know, like you, you're like here's. You don't think wait, you're being too hard on him? Like if he if he literally it's just in a month though. <laughs> are, you, are you gonna be like, how long have you been working here? You should know oh, to, who the olives are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I feel bad. There was this one time, like I went into the grocery store. And I walked up to a woman and I was like, where's the pesto? And she was like, what's pesto? And I was like, oh, you don't know what pesto is? I, I was just like, I was just think, looking back at it, it's like, hmm, yeah. probably shouldn't have assumed that. Like, I don't feel super guilty, um, but I still felt a little bad. I was like, what does yeah, wow. she, she know what pesto is? You wow. know, like, I'm speaking to my ex twice in this show, but her brother... <laughs> Her brother uh, used to make the pesto at their family store. So I worked for uh, her parents. Um, oh, okay. Produce Candlelit. clerk. They were the owners of this like, like high-end grocery store. And mm -hmm. he made pesto. And I found out through him that, um, I mean, certain pestos, not all, use uh, pine nuts. And pine nuts, uh -huh. like one of the most expensive nuts that you can, you can get. Yeah. They're really but You don't have to make it with it. You've made pesto without pine nuts, right? I make it with pumpkin seeds. Right. And that's also good because it's a nut-free alternative. Mm -hmm. And some people, I don't know, do, did they use spinach? Dad doesn't eat nuts, right? He can't. He's yeah. deadly allergic. Like, he would die. Deadly allergic. So my sister, like, a few of my family members, it's like, they can't have nuts. So mm. Not me. Well, yeah, like something I can eat. Yeah, one one of the the things that you can eat. Um, <laughs> do you find any gluten free uh, foods today? I didn't. I, I don't know. You showed me like um, 
some smoothie mix and you're not sure if it has gluten in it or at least a significant amount mm -hmm. it's probably like okay so like out of the 6.3 grams of the scoop which is probably yeah. like this there's mm -hmm. like milligrams like less okay, than so six percent tiny percentage and you're taking like very small amounts anyway so you might mm -hmm. i think i'll be okay i'm gonna be on the lookout i was i was kind of worried because like if you took this smoothie before and you got an upset stomach we might have to i've had to cancel the show <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i wouldn't do that to you <laughs> phew i would, would not do that huh? um what a relief what a relief oh yeah yeah for sure so I actually wanted to talk about some interesting slash serious topics this episode. Okay. And the first is electric vehicles. Now, I'm not an expert on them. I know they're like the wave of the future, but how do you feel about me? I have a Honda Civic. How do you feel about me just like replacing it with like a Tesla? Well, one of my first questions is, um, can I drive it? Can you drive it? Yeah. You can drive it. You can you can take it for a spin. Okay. A spin. So like outside the driveway and then Yeah, just a couple laps around the block. <laughs> if we're going far, if we're going far, I'm not sure. No, of you know what? I I wouldn't drive. want that responsibility. You you can drive it. You can drive it all the time I feel, like, um, I feel like if i did have one you'd have to at least like put it into high gear and, or like step on it and um see like how much power it really has oh wow electric vehicles have like a lot of torque and power and that's good for like going up hills and stuff but like just uh -huh. like, going from zero to 60 um super fast have you driven one before no i've not gotten the chance um I don't know, like you have to be a really big car enthusiast to have like driven just a variety of cars. Like normally well, people just drive mm -hmm. their own, right? Well, um, my friend, uh, he really wants a Tesla. So he takes like test drives of Teslas. Like he's not getting a car right now, but he's just kind of feeling it out. And he's like, definitely getting a yeah. Tesla when you're in the market. Yeah. Well, um, I'm, I don't know how mm -hmm. much it costs, but I'm guessing like, significant amount like maybe more than 50k canadian right yeah canadian probably and i didn't even think like the teslas they're like manufactured for a person if they're new yeah so i wouldn't know what additional fees that might be a bit with. steep maybe a bit yeah like but what i was gonna say there are more cars coming out like different brands yeah um i'll have to sure. look it up again but they're competitors so they'll kind of force the price to go down. Like yeah. they'll redefine Tesla's, you know, that luxury electric car. They'll redefine what's luxury. And be like, yeah. yeah. Push the prices down. For 45 sure. Canadian, 45K. Like, yeah, we can do that. You'll still have the sexiest <laughs> car in the block. And I the think, sexiest one for Earth too. There's like major competitors are Volkswagen and Nissan. Like uh -huh. these have, um, like the Leaf has been out for many years. Mm -hmm. leaf. I'd love to try one of them. I, I don't know how it feels, but it's supposed to be like really impressive and it's really quiet too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it would depend. Like, I want to do my part, you know, obviously, but I've been quite recently, like, uh, I'm fortunate my dad gave me a car after my other one exploded. Why unfortunate? Um, oh, uh, because, unfortunate. Because you're yeah, fu uh, for yeah fortunate okay, okay. but because um my dad is just giving me a car and it was paid in full you know wow nice. so yeah um so i don't have to worry about car payments on that end but i i don't want to just buy a new car that doesn't make sense to me but i definitely want my next car to be electric <laughs> yeah no yeah. I'm you just got a new car too right well yeah i got it um last last march last april mm -hmm. something like that um, yeah but yeah no i'll be driving my car for a while i have the option of um at the end of the lease uh just giving it back and getting another uh -huh. one from wherever 
but we'll see. Um, I feel like I've invested in this car and it's like, it's my car. It feels good. So I might yeah. just buy it after, after the lease is done. Yeah. It's like hard. Like ideally you want to do like the most you can, but like, it's still like not the most feasible for everybody to just go out there and get a, yeah. Fancy electric but car. Like places um, like California, for example, they're trying to set a target uh, like 2035. They want to sell only electric cars, like nothing else. No yeah. engine. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I wonder how um, how they would help with that. Are they going to give uh, subsidies? Subsidies. Yeah. Like, are they going to promote that to? Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. really not sure. I think, I think, uh, like there's like a lot of plans to be net neutral or net zero for emissions by 2020 mm -hmm. and um evs are like just one step of the way um like shipping and aviation is a big deal too yeah like, that contributes to the carbon emissions as well mm -hmm. but you can drive my tesla baby <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> we go on road trips, which we certainly will. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure how um how many charging stations there are. Right, uh, Tesla has put a bunch out because there's something called uh, charge anxiety or battery anxiety or something, um, which is just like people who go for long drives are worried they don't have a charging station to to fill up. Totally but valid. Tesla had, yeah, Tesla had uh, had installed a bunch. Like you look at the map, and it, it just you can plot out your course. Um, sometimes you're restricted to roads and stuff, but um, you can see like a map of the country and where the charging stations are. Mm. You have to certainly plan. But the good thing about it is that you just go home and you just plug in at home. You don't have to like plan a trip to the gas station uh, for your yeah. activity. I guess I really hope that an emergency like right. on the road somewhere doesn't it's take you like, too far it's just like have you ever ran out of gas no uh, you have you no no, no never thankfully you he ran out of gas come into the restaurant to eat with me oh no and oh, no and i had to go um pick him up drive him to the gas station uh get a canister uh -huh. buy a canister fill it up with gas go back to the car he parked it like um just side of the curb like uh going into this neighborhood by the time we got there we saw a cop cop was writing him a ticket but we oh, explained, no. we explained like hey like it's out of gas like we had to go get gas and he's like oh all right all right so he didn't write a ticket he's just like next time just just put a note <laughs> so we know <laughs> yeah. we're like all right all right dude <laughs> But I really helped. I really need sticky notes or something in my car <laughs> for that, though, because I'm like, do you have sticky notes and pen in your car? But then, hey, do you? You could totally no, I don't. But you could totally <laughs> just um, say like, it's really hard to find parking, but say like you just park randomly and you just put a sticky note, just say out of gas, we'll be back. <laughs> There's more things you could do. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just like, how likely? Like, <laughs> the cop opens the fuel tank and he's yeah. siphoning it just to check. <laughs> no, I'm picturing like, okay, so like, you know, there's a concert in the city, so you're yeah. parking his ass. Someone's yeah. like, okay, I'm just gonna park there. Park. You're perfectly yeah. parallel park between yeah. two cars. <laughs> yeah, you just like, so yeah, just put that out of gas. <laughs> and then everybody else gets arrested. Like, if you're, like, out, gets of gas, if you're you. out of gas, you literally like ease into the spot and then you, yeah. right? You, you don't like have time to back up and parallel park. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quick, let's parallel park at the concert. Then we'll get gas. Like, is that something you want to do with me? Go to a concert? That'd be pretty fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've that's been to quite a handful of concerts. Ooh, quite, quite a handful, a huh? Yeah, Arkells, Dua Lipa, Ooh, Zika Rose, Kid Cudi. Right. Yeah. Oh what? 
Yeah, I've been to a bunch. Oh man, I got to see uh, Childish Gambino for free. Oh wow! He went. He went to our, to my college to perform for free. Holy that shit! That was awesome. Yeah, I know. It That's was pretty cool. freaking sweet. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. That yeah. was really fun. Um, yeah. All right. Um, so you can drive my Tesla. Can we talk about healthcare? Okay. 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 Um, I mean, I don't think the system in Canada and America are like really top tier in the world. So even oh, if really? each other's healthcare systems, we're comparing like, like apples to apples. Like it's like on the bottom rung. Um, there's oh, really? in countries that are really like perfect systems. Um, so like in America, like people are like, oh, just go to Canada and like, like, oh, I had my baby in, in Canada and I didn't have to pay like egregious like hospital fees just because I had a baby and I wanted to make sure I would make it through it and my baby would be yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, like healthcare is good when you don't need it, but if you really need it, um, you're you're prone to wait like a long time and maybe suffer through and not get adequate or timely treatment. I heard that. Yeah. Is there private health care for that? Like, can you buy private health care? Like, I think there's like certain, uh, certain clinics, um, in certain circumstances you can get like private surgeries and stuff, but for the most part, um, I don't think, uh, like, the Canadian government really supports that system. Oh, okay. There's like a court case like in the Supreme Court right now where um, they're fighting for privatized health care um, in addition to private or in addition to public health care, which would be good mm -hmm. because then you'd have the option. Like if, yeah. if you want to sit in the waiting room or mm -hmm. have like some um, some condition that needs to be treated quickly and you're on a waiting list, um, just if you got the money, just go into the private system and just get it done. And yeah, it's like it could at times really like save your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've definitely heard of that um, being in place in some European countries. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's why that's one of the first things I asked. Um, I didn't know that. I, I, I thought you guys had like the option of private. Um, how long would you say the average rate like? Pre Corona, obviously, or pre whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're not allowed to say like, that. Like what the wait? Time? Going on YouTube. No. Uh, um. The the. COVID. COVID. What about it? I I didn't think we were we allowed to yeah. mention that on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Oh well. Okay. Anyway, pre COVID. What would you say like your average wait time was for like the primary care doctor? Oh, primary care doctor. Mm -hmm. Like not a specialist. Maybe two to four like, hours. Like if it's like. If wait it's, time? Yeah. Two to four dollars? Two to what? four hours. Oh, hours. Okay. Yeah. Hours. What? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, my ears. <laughs> No, where you have to pay like five bucks for for service, and it's just like a symbolic thing, like it's covered. Oh. Like you just like pay just for the sake of paying. Um, so you can still get same day. It's was it, when is it more of a problem with um getting specialists? Like okay, bird uh, is is just the first step. Then you have to wait for a specialist. Like my my mom um. I think she had to wait quite some time for her surgery and she was in a lot of pain for the condition that she had. Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry to hear. She was just taking through that. in and like could barely sleep at night for like maybe months actually waiting for. Oh surgery. man. Yeah. Months? She yeah. had to wait months? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. That's horrible. And there's no option. There's no private option. And people don't really think about it because unless you suffer from some condition, then you're like, where's my option? But like that's why, like if you come to Canada, when you come to Canada, you know if you get sick, hopefully by then they've had passed a different law. So is there anything that they're? I don't know if you know this. Do they have anything planned so that um, doctors don't just cater to those who for um, pay for private insurance? You know, like uh, 
prevent like too many doctors from just doing private insurance because wouldn't that compound the issue for like those who are, like, lower income um, like if some mm. doctors only accessible that way um i'm wondering how that would work I out know, i just know there's some doctors that like want to operate but they can't because of the wait times like and just the this the way the system is um, oh that's interesting so they're, they're stalled not, they can't do anything they're not able to have like the resources at the time to perform the operation oh right okay that's so interesting. you want to bring them to a private clinic and do the operation but it's illegal and the government makes oh, wow. so the government has control over your health and and bodies and stuff basically like you have no right to pay to get your your uh your body taken care of which mm -hmm. is very backwards actually like people say yeah. healthcare is great and stuff but um it's not the most advanced in the world yeah we have we probably have like decent hospitals but like the system could could change yeah and that that's interesting because like you know in america run into the wrong issue and suddenly you're owing hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah, because yeah which is yeah. you sign your life away but like you're in indebted. canada you, th you don't have that option you know it's like you suffer mm -hmm. through it or mm -hmm. and no, you pay yeah, when you can. right if, if you have yeah. um i don't know you have to fix your tendon or something and it's like a hundred grand right you can wait but they don't give you an option to pay and have it immediately and and that it. can get dangerous too some of the stuff you can't wait too long mm -hmm. uh, especially, I wonder how many like, people... especially diseases that um they like they're like progressively like degrading your body if if like you're misdiagnosed or something and they give you wrong treatment and it takes some time yeah. to figure it out mm -hmm. yeah it, it's like it, i'm not saying like malpractice is like um due to wait times but like finding a specialist is important and um getting the right tests at the right time is important too that's unfortunate i wonder if people have to strategize in canada where they live just so they can i think um, i think there's some um like minorities that they go back to their home country they'll fly oh, it's that bad yeah and, and get a surgery uh, when I was looking into um, possibly like staying in Canada for a while, um, when I'm visiting you, it seemed like I would have to cross the border to take care of some things. Like I would have to look into it more. But yeah, um, I would definitely have to cross the border back to the U.S. and get yeah. some things handled. Yeah, there's there, definitely but. there's definitely hospitals um, near the border on the U.S. side where you drive and you see like. Mm -hmm plates on the and the parking lot mm -hmm. it's just people yeah. traveling across and that's money you know like that's money that is canadian money that is like being sent to america so there's something that can be fixed um and that's what they're trying to do yeah that's unfortunate um hmm. yeah yeah so that's kind of grim but um mm -hmm. i'm sure we'll be fine for for some time <laughs> yeah fingers crossed yeah. you don't have to go to the hospital mm -hmm. yeah no mm. you know, eating healthy brushing my teeth all that stuff just do what i can yeah keep moving so on on this um track of serious topics um i wanted to talk mm -hmm. about gender issues okay because it's sort of like a modern issue. I mean, uh, probably people have been facing um, gender identity issues for quite some time, but it wasn't like in the in the public uh, in the public sphere to be addressed, right? Um, now that like Canada, the U.S. Um, has made it um, like a valid issue, um, I think a lot of people are more comfortable now. In their own bodies and how how to express themselves and stuff um mm -hmm. but i think there's still like um room for education because i mean some of my friends for sure like they're uninformed and they don't know that um you know like some people uh, go through these things and it's not like a mental health issue it's just it's just part of who they are like it's part of their natural development and it's 
it's a struggle mm -hmm. for them too. Um, how do you how do you personally feel about? I mean, I guess like, do you think do you think it's important for um, other societies to advance to our level in terms of having these sorts of conversations? Uh, like, you think you think um, about like um, the Middle East or Africa, and um, maybe it's not really discussed. Um, yeah, there's there's um there's a lot more conservative uh, conservatism like in those areas, some areas of those countries, mm -hmm. um, where um like homosexuality like signs you know signs that i'm not saying just like you know it's just not the safest place you know to have those like yeah. um more what people would say yeah. more like basic expressions yeah, i guess there. it comes in stages like maybe, mm -hmm. maybe some places they're ostracized and then it gets a bit better it gets a bit better and then they're ignored and then it gets a bit better it gets a bit better then they're not discussed you, you know like it it, it takes a while until it's like they're allowed to flourish in society and just be part yeah. of normal. I, I know I can't say that um, my country. I don't think you can either say that we we solved the issue. You know, it's definitely been more of a discussion mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. I would hope you know that that could come more to the forefront of people's minds um, mm -hmm. when uh, other people you know they may say like uh, what well, we're dealing with uh, providing enough food and clean water to our countries and like dealing with like yeah, the women's rights etc basic, basic survival issues yeah then we can focus on something like that discussion to the levels of yeah the, but that doesn't mean uh -huh. the issues don't it's not invalidate yeah it does not invalidate yeah. it for sure it's just, it's just um i guess it's not prioritized just yet um not part of the discussion I, yeah i you know between this and because we're speaking on education, Black Lives Matter, et cetera, I think more schools, at least, um, they should have more, um, more like exposure to different cultures instead of just yes. one like diversity <laughs> day. Like it, yeah. Like create these topics into the curriculum. Yeah. yeah just like kind of make it a more natural thing. Like, uh, um, I think I saw the Grassy episode. This um, woman who uh, identified as a they, they and them, they them, and uh, they had a boyfriend, and their boyfriend was trying to get used to this terminology and what it meant for their relationship, and it was really interesting. Um, What's the new house? Uh -huh. What's funny is like, I mean, this is hypothetical, but say I start to identify as a girl, mm -hmm. and you still love me. Yeah, you you have to start identifying as bisexual. Like it's like, it, yeah, it, it's, it's it's kind of weird. Yeah, kind of weird, right. But yeah, that's, that's how it's yeah. That's why I think um, you know education involving exposure to these things it's not as much as a novel topic and people will know how to navigate these situations better and hopefully be more accepting of these individuals as well um yeah. because there's still homophobia here mm -hmm. and um, homophobia in canada surely like you know there's people who don't understand um all together and are not tolerant of people who have decided to make a gender like different like identities for themselves with gender and then there's people just like like frankly I, i'm not i don't understand completely and i don't know how to do better yeah you're just uh yeah it's like a dissonance yeah. it's like a dissonance um Cognitive, but yeah. i would i would you know I'd, I'd as someone who doesn't know too much i would welcome the opportunity to understand more stories. They're really interesting yeah. stories. Like, yeah, I've I've um I've been to Halifax, and there was this mm -hmm. this play called like uh, Pleasureville, which was very good, and it was mm -hmm. about um a non-binary person and a lesbian person, and it was about like um 
And part of it was like the, the women's march and she had moved to a conservative town to open up a sex shop. And um, yeah, so it was interesting because I, I don't, I don't know if it was necessarily like right portraying their roles, but for mm -hmm. some reason the non-binary person was um, a bit upset that the, um, the lesbian could wear a pussy hat even because she had such a defined gender do you know mm -hmm. like and, and that's a struggle so yeah it's interesting it was, it was I, I don't know if that's um how non-binary people completely feel but that was like how it was portrayed yeah that's a that's kind of like a complication i think that some individuals who don't have those struggles um have there uh, between there's like a forefront of like different types of sexuality now and like is this like an individualistic thing or is this more like a common thing like is this like a dissociation from everything or like how much is this like common like uh, that can be like uh i don't know how to i'm not sure if i'm making any sense but no, like no, what, is, gotcha. what is this unique to the individual versus like unique to the specific movement i yeah. suppose yeah that's that's navigating that and just learning um you know yeah. how to be a special I, mean, I, I read this book this mm -hmm. my collection. okay um what is it called uh me myself they okay i actually spent um many hours like on my vacation in hamilton or um halifax reading this book mm -hmm. and, like getting get, gaining insight because Actually, the very first things I noticed was uh, the first day I arrived in Halifax, I went to um, a, a library, Halifax Central Public Library, and I went into mm -hmm. the washroom and I saw um, tampons available for um, the men's washroom. I've never seen that before, and I was like, piqued my curiosity. And then um, I attended this play, this Pleasureville play, and um, it kind of opened my mind a bit. So then I went to the bookstore. I was literally on vacation. I went to the bookstore and I got this book. And it's about a um, non-binary person um, and their struggles. And yeah, it's like it's like it's real. It's like society doesn't have um, like it doesn't hold back against uh, mistreating s some of these people. I, I mean. I guess equality is a constant fight. Um, it's too bad it has to be, but uh, like it's it, uh, hopefully it's not never ending. But you know, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's getting there, I guess. And it, it's like up to people like you and me and others uh, to to kind of shape um, how how it works. Yeah, educate ourselves and um, yeah. be where we need to be to support where we can. Mm -hmm. So, like I was saying, oh, did, uh, it's recording again. Yay! I'm glad. Hey, we're back online. <laughs> did you have something to ask me, baby? Yeah, I wanted to um, ask what your plans were. You're so kind as to me. What, what are you up to? Mm -hmm. and what are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, what comes to the forefront of my mind is reading this book more than this tonight. But right. I, before I do that, I actually have to do some homework. I'm taking this web design course, and this person is on Photoshop, which I've Tell been me about that. I've been using for years and years. Oh, you have? Yeah, I started using it when I was like maybe like 12, 14. I What's used it like liberally all the time. What was the first thing you photoshopped, babe? The very first thing I photoshopped. Well, the first yeah. like, real like consistent projects I did was uh -huh. um, it was called cleaning uh, manga. Okay. Manga. Oh, manga. So people would scan it. So Japan would release uh -huh. it and then they'd scan it. And um, I would make sure the blacks were black and the whites were white and there was no like um, noise. And that was, oh, that was gotcha. my job. Like I'd go over with the paintbrush and do that. And then I'd remove the text from. Um, the uh the bubble speech bubble someone would translate it and give me the translation and i'd fill it in and then we'd package it zip it up and upload it online and wow. fans would read like one piece and our group was one of the best groups 
for nice. like we we publish like super high quality scans wow. we, would, we would get um so you could either like get the weekly shonen jumps mm -hmm. or you can get the published um like like raws i guess like they're like big like right oh wow we got those but we were behind because like the weekly shonen jumps come out as magazines and these were just really high quality that came out like um maybe months later maybe even longer than that and we would just release like super high quality scans that is so cool do you have any pictures of the raw so i'd love to see them yeah later. you i do i can send them to you Yay! I, I even um used to like do coloring uh oh, you did? yeah so i would like grab um one page of the manga mm -hmm. and then just choose like the colors that were appropriate for the characters and yeah just fill it in and it was nice <laughs> that's really cool mm -hmm. that's so cool now i'm learning something about you yeah podcast, so. so today <laughs> what i learned was um mostly shortcuts like I, I know how to use these tools. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some like some functions are new to me, but most of the tools I pretty much know how to use. But then in the videos, they tell you how to use the shortcuts. So like Control G, mm -hmm. you have um, if you use the selection tool and select like a bunch of rectangles, for example, you press Control G, and that groups them in a folder, and then you can name the folder whatever. Oh, that's handy. Yeah. Like, so are uh, you gonna Photoshop faster than ever now, babe? Yeah, like Alt Enter is uh, fill. Uh huh. And there's there's other ones like um. Well, I have to look them up. Like Control P does something for sure. Mm -hmm. Control R Control R does like the ruler or something, the guidelines or something. Okay. Yeah. Um. So that's gonna make things quicker. But even without it, you can just move your mouse. It's not like a like the end of the world if you don't know the shortcut. <laughs> you seem to have gotten by several years without it. So yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> I have uh, the Creative Cloud Suite. And okay. I, I use InDesign for, um, I guess, laying out uh, text and images. It's it's mm -hmm. more for like structuring content than photoshop which is like editing photos so mm -hmm. i use indesign for um something for work and unfortunately like i spent all this time making this um document for work it was like um a style guide and it ended up not being necessary because we we decided we just use the one in figma so i had made it like i spent like hours on this and just to hear, like, oh, I think we're just going to use the Figma one. Oh. <laughs> like, it was a good learning experience, but it, yeah. it ended up being um, not even put to use. <laughs> Do you even use Creative Cloud anymore for work, or you just stick with Figma um, now? So I'll be using it for this video. Um, oh, okay. We cut out for a bit for uh, for stupid reasons. Well, yeah, it's my fault, but. Um, I'm gonna blend or uh, merge the two clips together with um, Premiere Pro. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks um, for having me. Yeah, no, it was great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine that's the way I end the podcast. <laughs> I mean, that'd be kind of funny. That was like your signature. Every single episode, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and then your your fans would come up to you and be like, uh, yeah, and then just like, <laughs> no, like not mind. not how they introduce themselves to me, but like well, after we're done talking, like yeah. after we have like our social gathering, everyone's just like, uh, uh yeah, <laughs> we just run off.